you look at the land based on population and, and how much they can actually grow, there's a lot of countries that wash out where they don't have any excess supply or very limited to actually export. The four major export regions of the world which correlate to productive land are the US, Canada, South America, so it's the breadbasket, Argentina, Brazil, Uruguay is in there, Europe, so France primarily, but then Black Sea, which is Russia, Ukraine, are major exporters. And then you have Australia, which is a major exporter of food crops. With the most arable land and then countries that are actually exporting, that's the subset that you're getting down to in terms of where you're going to invest, because you're gonna invest somewhere where they're exporting. If you're investing in some place that's not exporting, you don't have the same market mechanisms to get the same price and there's not the same demand for the land because it's not export commodities, if you will. So that's an important factor too within this kind of Wisconsin arable land map. If, in fact, you wanted to try and go to some of these other countries where they aren't producing in excess, you're also much more vulnerable to political volatility. These countries are going to be much more likely, as we've seen recently in Argentina, to putting price controls in. Venezuela, the same thing. So frankly, these are the sovereign risks that Arlen spoke about, the kinds of countries that are easy to cross off the list. Which you can't actually own the land. You have to lease it. So that's another cost factor in terms of the turn on equity, if you will. How much can you get out of your investment? these things start to chip away. In terms of the sovereign risk, it's not just the characterization of countries and their political state. When people don't have food, there's riots. That was a major trigger in Egypt because the price of wheat went up and started taking up 60-70% of people's income. And when people can't eat, people don't care because it's survival. So it's a very real and very visceral issue. The government's job primarily is to protect its citizens. And if people can't eat enough or you've got outsiders coming in and robbing the people of food or charging them an excessive amount of money, the government is going to step in and fix that problem. So you are in one of these kind of export regions. And that's also what lines up when we look at the competition or people that are also doing investment funds or pension plans like Tia Craft that's investing. They're going into places that have excess. They're going into marketplaces where it's primary export. They're going into Brazil. They're going to Australia. They're going to the U.S. So they're in these major regions. The Ukraine's a big investment area. So other companies are there for a reason. It's not just our opinion here.